Hey there, I'm Dan Martell, serial entrepreneur, investor, and creator of SaaS Academy. In this video, I'm gonna share with you some strategies on increasing your monthly reoccurring revenue so that you can have a huge impact on your ARR, your annual reoccurring revenue. And be sure to stay at the end where I share with you how to get access to my precision scorecard methodology so that you can get clear on your outcomes, measure those backwards, and have your team accountable for the right metrics to grow your business. So maybe you're frustrated because you're like, I just need to grow my monthly reoccurring revenue. My MRR is not growing, it's flat. And you want strategies to make this happen. Now I coach dozens of incredible founders and one of the first things that I do with them to really have an impact on their business is to tweak these changes to their pricing and then their product. Many founders, when they start off, they're just small and they're getting going and they've got like features and they get a customer and then 10 customers and 100 and they're just so friggin' pumped that they've got customers that they never revisit how their plans are structured or their pricing or anything to ask themselves, you know, I've obviously created more value for my customers since we started, but nothing's changed when it comes to the pricing or the structure of the way that people enroll. We probably have new customers that are 100 times bigger and we haven't done anything. And what I wanna share with you guys in this video is the six areas that you could be looking at in your business to increase your MRR. Number one, raise prices. Now I know this sounds so friggin' flippant. You're like, duh, Dan, I could raise my prices. I know that. The truth is, is have you done it? Have you gone through a price increase? You know, recently I was coaching one of my clients and they were charging $6 a month for a tool that literally ran their customer's business. And I asked them, why have you ever changed your pricing? And they were worried that they would lose a bunch of customers. But if you just think about it, it's pure economics. If I take my pricing and I potentially change it, and, and this is really simple, you just look at the market, you know, what's a competitive set look like? You're at six bucks, you know, you can go to 25 and it's not a crazy number, but you 4X the pricing, let's just say worst case you lose, maybe, in my experience, not as much, you lose 10 to 15% of your customers. You've gone up 4X and you've only lost 10 to 15% of your customers. So net, net, you are way further ahead. And the main reason is you need to do this is so that you can invest in innovation. You can invest in your team. You can actually build a lifestyle that supports the business so that you don't wanna just sell it every six months because you're just not having a good time. So number one, make sure you raise your prices. Number two, ditch the free plan. Many founders start off by offering free because they just want anybody, anybody, please use my product so they make it really easy. There's no friction, you can just sign up, you can use it, it's for free. The challenge is, is they don't set any limits, any trial, uh, extent, like any cutoffs to that free plan so that people just keep using it and using it and they're using server resources or they're, they're hitting up support. And yes, you could argue that this is a marketing thing, but I'm gonna tell you, most of the founders that I coach are bootstrapped founders. And at the end of the day, they're investing personally their time in support, okay? They're answering their 1-800 number, going right to their cell phone. And I don't know about you, but if I've got people that are asking me for my support, I wanna know that we're aligned. And the best way to do that is get rid of the free plan, go straight to a paid, maybe do a free trial, no credit card on file if you want. I prefer a credit card on file. And then that way, you know that when you're serving your customer and you're activating, you're work, making sure they get the most out of their trial, that there's a high likelihood they'll become a paying customer. Number three, unbundle the features. There's a very good chance that you kept adding and stacking and stacking and people ask for new requests and you just kept adding new features that right now when you look at your plans, for the most part, it could be, I've seen this happen very, very often, that it's just one plan with a bunch of stuff. You need to look at unbundling them and really asking yourself, what does a customer at this stage of this size of this industry you know, look like? And what do they need to be successful without you know, giving them too much? And what does the next stage look like? So just by unbundling, um, it's gonna have a huge impact in your business. And the cool part is you could even look at um, adding add-on. So taking something, for example, like a QuickBooks Sync or maybe some kind of like other integration that's native, not a Zapier connection, but something native to your solution 
And having that as an add-on so that you can get an extra $20 a month per customer that needs that, but know that, hey, that's probably an enterprise customer, so you can price it accordingly. But if somebody's at the lower end and they really want it, even though they don't need as many seats, they can have the lower end plan, but have that add-on. So unbundling features are a great opportunity to increase your monthly reoccurring revenue. Number four, removing unlimited features. This is probably the biggest bane to revenue opportunity to most startup founders is having a value uh, driver, some kind of, you know, it could be the number of accounts. I had one of my clients recently uh, moved from a all you could eat an unlimited accounts underneath their different plans to a per seat pricing. The reason why is when they went to the market and did the research, they hired an incredible company to come in and do that research. They found that they would prefer to buy under that mechanism because it allows it to be more predictable in regards to their cost structure. So even though they were trying to be this like altruistic, hey, there's three different plans and we're not gonna ever restrict you on a specific um, a number of accounts that you have on our products, so we just want you to be successful. It was actually against what the customers, uh, how they expected to buy that kind of solution. So actually removing unlimited and making it uh, structured so there's a number of accounts per different plan um, this is, I mean, I've seen this with, with companies like Wistia, with the, the number of uh, videos, you can do it on um, other data points. It's really whatever, when you look at your customer's usage, okay, amongst all your customers, there's probably really clear breakdowns where somebody transitions from this level activity to the next tier of activity, and that's where you wanna start adding some constraints in the upper end of their usage that kind of forces them into the next plan that you might offer. So make sure that you remove unlimited features if that makes sense. Number five, move up market. It is very rare that I've seen companies that start at the enterprise level move to mid market or very, even less rare that somebody's at a mid market level and moves down to SMB. What typically happens is when a product starts, you start at, this, at the SMB, the small medium business level, because you don't have the feature set to really serve a mid-market customers. But over the years, over a two, three, four, five year period, you'll probably get some of these medium sized companies come into your product and ask you for some features and you build them. And then all of a sudden you realize that, hey, maybe five to 10% of our customer base are actually mid-market customers, but yet all of your marketing, all of your packaging, all of your, your plans and your support is really still just selling and serving to an SMB customers, moving up market, making a deliberate uh, decision to say, you know what, we're gonna, we're gonna kind of like, not get rid of, but just kind of hide the smaller plan, move more to mid-market, change our marketing, change our positioning, change our pricing structure, change our sales and our essentially our go-to-market strategy for that mid-market customer. Maybe start building an outbound sales team to target those key accounts that we want. That's how you move up market. And what's great about it is the larger the customer, the churn number comes down, the average, uh, the annual contract value for an account goes up and your MRR goes through the roof. So just moving up market is such a, a natural way. If you've been in the market for three to five years, you've probably already got those customers and just waiting for you to move up and start adding and focusing on them as a segment. Number six, maximize upselling. So I call this farming. There are so many opportunities in your product for you to look at activities that happen uh, from an account point of view and offer uh, expansion revenue opportunity, meaning that there's some feature that they might, they might hit a limit or they're on their way to hitting a limit and then you could be like, hey, Joanne, I noticed that you guys have already used four out of your five accounts. Um, let me know if you want to discuss about moving to our next plan because all of a sudden the per account pricing gets cheaper and you also get these extra benefits. So actually getting really good at notifications for you, for your customer success team to identify opportunities for upselling, other add-ons, other plans to your existing customers is a really low hanging fruit for anybody to expand their monthly reoccurring revenue by just offering it. Most people need, don't even know they've come up or they might be hitting these new levels and they just need somebody to talk to. And you can be that person. You just gotta reach out, chat with them and get them excited about that next level of support, next level of implementation, of value that you're gonna unlock in, that next, uh, in, your, in your product and those integrations, those add-ons and get them on board. But you need to learn how to maximize your upselling.
So six simple tweaks you can make to really increase your MRR. Number one, raise prices. This is a no brainer. You've added more value. You, you should be capturing more value in your pricing structure. Two, ditch the free plan. Get people that want your support that are gonna use your product to pay you for it. They're gonna value it more. Three, unbundle the features. There are things that you're offering that should definitely be uh, standalone, potentially as an add-on that people could buy on another monthly basis. Number four, remove unlimited features. There is a value pricing axis that should be understood and your unlimited features is holding you back from uh, allowing customers to move up the value chain in your plans. Number five, Move up market. When you started, you were probably serving an SMB customer or mid-market. It is time to move up market to capture higher annual contract values, have lower churn, and overall allow for increased expansion revenue. And number six, maximize your upselling. Become great at identifying those opportunities that customers would naturally want to have a conversation about moving to the next level of service with your product. As I mentioned in this video, I wanna share with you an exclusive resource called the Precision Scorecard. It's a framework I created to allow my clients to get clear on not only their targets, but their actuals on a monthly and weekly basis. And in it, uh, you can click the link below to download your copy. I provide the metrics for below a million in ARR and above a million um, so that you can just map those to the funnel structure that I offer in that format to get clear to hold your team accountable for the specific numbers that they should be hitting on a weekly basis. It's gonna map up to their monthly targets and eventually hit your quarterly goals. You can click the link below to download your Precision Scorecard. And if you like this video, smash that like button. Be sure to subscribe to my channel. And if there's anybody you care about that you feel I could serve, feel free to share this video with them. As per usual, I wanna challenge you to live a bigger life and a bigger business, and I'll see you next Monday is the money shot state of the end. Dun, 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 dun.